it's happening in New York, New Jersey, or Long Island. Hear about it with Joe Piscopo. Mornings, 6 to 10 on AM 970. The Answer. Portions of this show sponsored by Route 22 Nissan. Jersey Joe on the radio. Uh, Professor Murray Sabrin is Professor of Business and Finance at Ramapo College. Uh, if you're listening outside of Jersey, New York, the Professor is very, very well respected. He's uh, innovative. He's independent. He is now a candidate for the United States Senate in the great state of New Jersey. Murray, welcome back to the show, brother. Good well, to see you, man. You, Joe. you look good, it. man. You look good. You look good. I didn't. I, you, no I didn't, smoking. No drinking. There. It, no, really. No smoking, no drinking. Go uh, to the gym several times a week. Yeah, uh, man. Keep the calorie countdown, yeah. you, and you're you, in great shape. You know it's so funny too, because you you've been around a long time just because you started young. So when you hear Murray Saber, Murray Saber, Murray Saber, yeah, this, oh that's that guy. Yeah, he ran for office, and you know what Murray Saber said. And you're a libertarian, and you're very individual minded in all all topics, which we're going to get into. So I um, automatically assume you're 95 years old. You know, because you've been around so long. You look like a kid, brother. Look at you, I'm man. I'm 71, Joe. Are you 71? I'm God, 70. you. Look good. I'm right behind you, brother. This is good. Yeah. Giving me hope, my friend. Giving me hope. The fountain of youth. That's what we need. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In New Jersey, no less. Oh, my gosh. All right. So, so, so now you're running for the United States Senate as a Republican? Libertarian. Libertarian. I received oh. the nomination March 24th at the Libertarian Party Convention, which was held at on the campus of Rutgers, New Brunswick, where I got my PhD. Yeah, yeah. And it was an exciting uh, um, uh, session. Uh, you can read my acceptance speech on my website, <laughs> Sabrin for Senate. Uh, it's a great speech, I think. Here because, we go. Uh, Here we it go. It highlights what we need to do in America to turn things around because we essentially have one party in Washington, D.C. I call it the Welfare Warfare State Party. Yeah. It's the Washington Party, which I concluded back in 1971 when President Nixon gave us wage price controls, which is the opposite of what a free market economy should be all about. Yeah, so so the, the work fair, is that what you're dealing no, with, that sort of thing? No, the Welfare Warfare State. We have too much expenditures on welfare, and we have a thousand bases around the world, Joe. No one's attacking us. No one's going to ready to attack us from a military point of view. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. why do we have so many bases? We're spending more on military than the next eight countries combined in the United States. Mm. So my signature issue on the domestic front mm -hmm. is, and this is what everyone loves who I've spoken to across the political spectrum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A dollar tax credit for every dollar you donate to your house of worship or your favorite charity. That means the money stays locally. Mm. It, it goes into programs that provide people with needs such as health care and, um, and uh, training and mm. uh, drug addiction programs and things like that. It's the way to humanely deal with people's needs at the local level without what I call trickle-down welfareism, where the federal yeah, government, state yeah, governments yeah, yeah, are trying to yeah. put together programs. But do you agree with the workfare situation like Newt Gingrich came up with and like the president says you, if you're going to get food stamps, you're going to have to work for them? Do you agree with that? To me, that's, that's a side issue. What we need to do is have people at the local level provide the resources to the great nonprofits that are mm. out there, the charities that are out there all across the and country. And you get write-offs for that? Yeah, and you get 100% write-off instead of now you get a tax deduction. So this is something that every college university, every hospital, every mm. uh, house of worship should yeah. uh, like because it means that they will get the resources they need in order to deliver the services that is required in the community to help people become financially independent. And that's the key. We should have an America where people are financially independent. What do you do about Patterson, New Jersey? The Fourth Ward had a great conversation with a friend last night. Man, I go. you go through this great town. I was born in Passaic, in uh, Lou Costello's hometown, sure, sure. man. Lou Duva's hometown. There's a great history in Patterson. Look, and, and, and forgive me, it, the people of Patterson deserve so much more than Absolutely. is there. Well, How do you help the less fortunate? Well, he, here's another thing that's part of our campaign. The war on drugs has been, has been the most counterproductive social policy we've had in America. It creates incentives for people to deal in, in basically poison because you yeah. create a black market, yeah. and yeah. when you have a black market, yeah. you attract the most vicious people in our society. So if you eliminate the, uh, the illegality of drugs, then you can deal with people's drug addiction in a humane way by having the, the great organizations that deal with drug addiction throughout the country. Yeah, but now you're, gonna, you're going, so you legalize drugs, I mean, like marijuana, but you legalize other drugs as well? Yeah, because you take the money incentive out there, and there'll be no supply coming into the country. Kind of right? like, what, what country has that? Portugal did it, and it's usually successful. Yeah, Portugal yeah. is, the, I think, the only country in the world. Isn't Amsterdam like that, too? Isn't Amsterdam but a Port thing? Portugal, yeah. people are coming 
to the uh, Portugal from the United States, see how it's working, and it's working. They're all coming here. Well. They all the Portuguese come here. They're in the Ironbound. So what? <laughs> Apparently, well, what 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 cities need is more free enterprise. That's what's going to lift people up. Out well, of you create revenue. Well, no, you need jobs for people. Yeah. So they become. Yeah, that's so, what I mean. So yep. they can provide for their families, for themselves, mm. for their community. Yeah. This is what we need. We need the restructuring of the U.S. economy. But you're going to say legalize drugs in your campaign? In Absolutely. In a debate, you'll say? It's counterproductive. I mean, yeah. I grew up watching The Untouchables. So did you. We saw how bad prohibition was in the 1920s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It created... But you can't... You, Murray, I, I, listen, you, you're great, and I love your, your innovative thinking. You can't legalize heroin, man. You can't legalize heroin or... It just it's, so, it's so available today. Because there's an incentive to bring it into the country. Yeah. If there's no incentive to bring it into the country, it, the supply dries up. And, be, and you reduce crime enormously. If you can't keep drugs out of prisons, how are you going to keep it out of the country? Yeah. And, and you're, you, you, cut, you cut the dealers off at the Absolutely. knees. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There's no incentive. Uh, I, don't, I, I hear you. In theory, it may be good. but Listen, man, you speak to police officers in private. They yeah. tell you yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They okay. tell you this. All because right. they're not social workers. They're not medical professionals. Let's the medical let the medical professionals deal with people's drug addiction. Yeah, yeah. So you're you're virtually going to be a third party candidate. Absolutely, right? we're the third largest party. How do you, be, you know? And I went, I did the foray to run for governor. Right. And I went in and I researched it, and very right. very seriously. And everybody knows I was not playing. I learned a lot on this sure, radio show sure. talking to uh, folks like yourself to, to break through. And I was going to go as an independent. Right. And in retrospect, I must say, I'm very organically honest on the show. I don't know. I kicked myself a little bit. Yeah. Saying maybe I could have won as an independent, but I stepped down. It's tough. For the lieutenant governor. Yeah, she's a great gal. But the Democrats came out. They voted a progressive socialist in. Now we're going to be paying for, yeah. In, yeah. In, in, we're, we're supposed to pay for the legal defense of immigration sanctuary. Talk about legalized yeah. drugs. Le we're going to have a stoner state. I don't know what the progressive socialists stand for, yet, Yet, no. every Democrat voted for, for Phil Murphy. How are you going to break through as a third-party candidate? We have a very simple strategy. The goal of the campaign is to get into the debates. How do we get into the debates? We raise enough money so the media and the narrative is that I'm a competitor with the Democrats and Republicans. So our goal is to raise around $2 million. Why $2 million? I believe for every dollar we raise, it's mm. like $10 because we don't have a paid staff. It's all volunteers. We don't have a headquarters. We don't have overhead. All that money will go into get out the vote. Yeah, there's no assistant with you running around now, is no, there? No, no, no. <laughs> it's September. Excuse me, Professor. September. Professor, you have to leave now your next appointment. <laughs> <laughs> September, on, October, we get the vote out. Yeah. And if we can get the vote out, we need between 750,000 and a million votes to win. Mm -hmm. I'm going to demonstrate that the Republican and Democratic parties have been terrible for the American people. For the last 160 years, Democrats and Republicans have governed America. We've gotten to undeclared war since World War II. The debt has gone from zero from 1860 to $21 trillion today. That's the fault of the Democrats no. and Republicans. Mm -hmm. So the Republicans and Democrats own the problem in America. Our solutions are very common sense solutions. Mm -hmm. It's bring the troops home, have tax credits for, uh, for donations to charity, it's to end the spying by the federal government in violation of our Fourth Amendment rights. We need to have uh, a lower taxes so people will have more money for their own well-being, they'll have more money for their future, and you, they'll have more money for charitable contributions. You're le leading the fight against federal gas tax, correct? Well, the gas tax, I believe, should come out of the Pentagon budget because, as you know, the federal and state highway system was created by the National Defense Highway Act from, from the mid-1950s. So that money should come out of the Pentagon so we don't have to have a gas tax. The federal government is spending $4.1 trillion this year. Can any American say we're getting our money's worth from $4.1 trillion yeah, of spending yeah. with a trillion dollar deficit? Now that's, this is in good economic times, Joe. We have a deficit in good economic times. Yeah. When the next recession yeah, yeah, hits, yeah, yeah. the deficit is going to be well over $2 trillion yeah, a year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, 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 Professor, politics is an industry. Oh, it's no, no industry. question about it. It's a it. career. It's an industry. Sure. You're moving up. Everybody goes in. And these jobs in Jersey, man, they hit, oh, you're going to support me? You're going to get this prime job. Right. You're going to be head of this committee. And there's like a salary attached to everything. Well, that's and there's a pension and welfare attached to everything. Yeah. I mean, how do you stop that? How do you break through that? Well, that's why I need to get into the debates to point out that the corruption of both Republicans and Democrats yeah. have gotten us yeah. to where we are today. It's okay. that simple. Where do we go to find you, Professor? Sabrenforsenate.com. You can read my bio, mm -hmm. how we came to America nearly 70 years ago. 
um, how uh, we got married nearly 50 years ago. Uh, my wife Ooh. and I are celebrating Ooh. our 50th wedding anniversary God, this year. Look, and you look great. And uh, next Marriage. year, I'll be celebrating my 60th uh, a year of becoming a U.S. citizen right here in Lower Manhattan, not far from the studio. You did? Yes. Six, well, you got to come yeah, back. Right? June 1959. We would like to listen to everybody. Professor Murray Sabrin right there. Sabrin for Senate. Dot com. com. Sabre and for Senate. Murray, thanks for taking Thank the time. Thank you so much, You Joe. came in early. You beat that George Washington Bridge traffic. Absolutely. Debbie, you listen to Debbie Duhame getting in here, too. I know. All the time. Thank you, Professor. Thank Great you. to have you here. Everybody knows this guy. No, everybody knows he can do a radio show. Joe Piscopo. Mornings, 6 to 10 on AM 970. The Answer.